Uh, this section of the program is called Build the African Nation, One Billion Strong. And I want to introduce our um, comrade, Ona Zene Yeshitela. I just want to tell you a little bit about her before she gets up here because she does incredible work. Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitela joined the party in January 31st, 2010. Deputy Chair began contributing to the movement in 1995-1996 by starting the first food co-op. She then joined the committee to elect Omalia Chatella for mayor of St. Petersburg in 2001. As a member of Impedum, DC Ona, sorry, Deputy Chair Ona developed the office of the National Treasurer. She developed the Impedum membership and sustained a program including the point of entry process for recruiting and winning members and donors. As a member of the party, Deputy Chair was assigned as Chief of Staff of the Office of the Chairman and was appointed Deputy Chair to build the capacity of the Office of the Chair and began building a staff. Deputy Chair coordinated the party's goal for updating and revising the APSP Organizer's Manual as mandated by the Fifth Party Congress. In the past year, the Office of the Chair has assumed leadership of the Office of Economic Development and Finance, and Deputy Chair is spearheading that transition. She has brought the vision of the Chairman to the economic front of our movement and brought science system protocols and accountability to the Office of Economic Development and Finance. Deputy Chair is not only directs the OEDF, but also has temporarily assumed the role of Board President of African People's Education and Defense Fund, and has been developing the economic capacity of all of the APDF institutions, as well as developing a human resources department which can be reproduced throughout the movement. So with that said, I want to bring to the podium Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitala. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades. Thank you, Comrade Aisha, for that introduction. Um, this has been the greatest process, this plenary. I just want to give Chairman O'Malley Chatella another round of applause for, for his presentation this morning. And that report will continue in this, this afternoon. So I want to start out, because some of the words that the chairman wrote um, this morning, I just want to, the first thing that he said, I want to read that, because that's going to be the basis of uh, my presentation today. He said, I quote, at various times during our history, we have de declared the significance of building the African People's Socialist Party. At no time has this declaration been more true and urgent than today. Not only in building the party, a critical task of the African People's Socialist Party and our members, it is also the fundamental task of the African Revolution at this critical history juncture. So that being said is that this workshop is about building the socialist economy and the power to govern. Can I get the, the light? All right, bingo. Oh. And also contribute to the success of the African People's Socialist Party. The vision, every African must support building the African nation by contributing to the African People's Socialist Party in order for the party to lead the revolution. Africans must make the party a self-reliant organization. In this year of our 40th anniversary of the African People's Socialist Party, we salute the party's strong history of self-reliance. And we salute the vision, stance, and leadership of Chairman Omali Ishitela. And I just want to say, you know, I don't know a more generous leader than Chairman Omali Ishitela. I mean, there's no leader in the world where you can really go and have access to him 24-7, I mean really, the chairman works 24-7, you can email him, you can call him, and he's gonna call you back and answer your questions at any time. And I don't know a leader that you can be able to do that with, do you? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I wanna also say that we have to recognize the chairman in all our, in all our work, wherever we are, wherever we doing presentations or 
putting African internationalism out in the world, we have to give credit where credit is due. And the chairman has 40 years plus he's been doing this work. So we have to salute him at every juncture of our work. So I just want to really put that out there to everybody in the room and everybody that's listening on Ahura News as well. So we really want to salute Chairman O'Malley and Shetela for all the work that he's done for these past 40 plus years. Uhuru. <laughs> this presentation will show the connection between two fundamental issues we're confronted at this plenary. One being self-determination and the other being economic self-reliance. The African People's Socialist Party came out of a period of the 1960s where economic self-reliance was at the core of all organizations in the black liberation movement. The Panthers were selling Miles' Little Red Book of Revolutionary Theory as a fundraiser. This year, we're making the Little Black Book, and this is going to be all the quotations of the chairman. So how, how great is that going to be to have that on hand? We understood in the 1960s, and we understand now, that Africans have to be able to satisfy, satisfy our own needs. As the chairman summed up in the 60s, various organizations met with their downfall or were extremely compromised because they could not create their own resources. We understood also in the case of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinated Committee, all resources was redrawn by the white liberal supporters within a week after we took a position in support of the Palestinian struggle. That left organizations and organizers abandoned throughout the South without even money to put gas in their tanks and get out of there. The self-determination tendency of the black liberation movement requires self-reliance. We are building an independent free nation and free people, creating economic self-reliance separate us from neo-colonial entities. This is the dividing line between African internationalism and, and neo-colonialism. Neo The party has always struggled for self-reliance. We did car washes, fish fries. We even picked oranges in Florida. We even lived in collectives rotating so one person would work for a period so others could be full-time organizers. We organized our own bookstore in Louisville, record, recording store and bookshops in Gainesville. We owned a black commercial newspaper called the Florida Black Voice, but it was still an ongoing struggle for resources. While the movement of the 1960s suffered defeat, the party was not defeated as an organization. We continued to struggle for self-reliance and to do the political work. We carried on our backs the general cause of the movement. We even contributed to bringing back organizations that fell from the counterinsurgency. <coughs> The entire revolutionary movement was targeted by COINTELPRO. Chicago police, under the direction of the FBI in 1969, assassinated Fred Hampton, who led the Black Panther Party. And he was only 21 years old when he assassin was assassinated. And they also assassinated other members of our, of our leaders, as well as Malcolm Martin, Priest, Patrice Mamumba, Bobby Hutton. It was just a ray of um, uh, leaders in our um, in the black liberation movement that were assassinated in the 60s. In the 1970s, we observed many white organizations claiming solidarity for the Puerto Rican independence movement and other struggles for national liberation. We learned quickly that opportunism was at the core of these organizations, solidarity organizations. In the 70s, the party went to Oakland, California to wage the campaign to free Desi Wood and smash colonial violence. The party formed its own solidarity movement called the APSC and built a real base in Oakland Bay Area for reparations. To the party, solidarity meant give us the press, train us on how to do it, and we'll print whatever we want to print. Because as a means of solidarity in the past, 
and even now today, you know, they think that, okay, well, we'll tell you what to print, we'll tell you what to do, but no, the party said, no, you give us the, the, the equipment, we'll, and teach us how to do it, and we'll print whatever the hell we want to print. You can't tell us what to print. In the beginning, APSC began to carry out charity work. It would fundraise for a specific task asked by the party. Finally, the concept of reparation took hold and real solidarity was internalized and resource generated became ongoing. The resources raised by APSC was used by the party to keep the political work going during the period of defeat of the Black Revolution and the U.S. encounter insurgency. During this whole period, we did not generate the capacity for the party itself to be economically sustaining. Now we see the, the critical need for self-reliance inside the party throughout the world as imperialism is dying. Like the chairman said, this is the end of imperialism. It's our time, so we have to lead. Masses of African people, wherever we are located, are being laid off, if employed at all. Unemployment reflects the new death of crisis of imperialism and capitalist economy. The housing crisis brought about the greatest loss of wealth for African people since slavery. The pound, the dollar, and the euro are worthless, but they are still trying to save it at our expense. The major shift is for us to develop the capacity of economic self-reliance for the party. We have to reactivate the capacity for the party to engage in self-determination, self which is economic development. This means we must fund our party and our organization. We must build the socialist economy of the African Revolution. We must do for self. We must build dual and contending power. But this requires a different mindset throughout the entire organization. The African Revolution must develop our own capacity for economic self-reliance. We must be our own liberators. Marcus Garvey's five-year plan developed in the 1920s contained a budget with the goal that every African in the world would pledge to contribute voluntarily a sum of money that would fund the organization to a achieve its programs and uplift the entire race. That resulted in building programs of the UNIA and creating a Black Star Shipping Line Company. Garvey appealed to the African world just like APS, like we're doing right now, just like the party is asking on every African to contribute to the success of the party. Funding the party is ammunition to be used to fight for the African nation. And I just want to say, really, that the chairman spoke about this uh, earlier, about we're one billion strong as Africans. And as individuals, uh, statistically, they say that 75% of individuals make up the giving you know, for funding different um, programs and organizations, where only 8% is made up through wills and bequests. And 13% is made up of foundations and believe it or not, only 4% is made up through uh, corporation. So that's why we're asking that everybody in this room today be able, as an individual, give to building the African nation one billion strong. Now it's, us, it's time for us to build the funding, the, begin the funding of the African nation. We must build the administrative capacity of the party we must build the socialist economy and the power to govern. We must build the economic development capacity of every department and organization of the party. We must build Black Star Industries. We must send party organizers throughout the African world. We must build the African Social Socialist International till victory is won. Uhuru. So in, some, in summary, comrades, is what we're saying is that it's up to us to fund the African nation, which is the African People's Socialist Party. 
So right now what we're going to do is, is call up Secretary General um, Gaida Cambon, who will say a few words about the history of self-reliance within the party. Uhuru. But before we call her up, I want to say a few words about her. Secretary General Kayo Kambon serves as the Secretary General of the party and is one of the his, his, heroic African leaders of our time. Gaida met with the African People's Socialist Party while she was living in Brooklyn, New York and attended graduate school at Columbia University. The bourgeoisie wanted her intellect and drive for their own ends. Gaida was active at, at that time in the Black United Front in, in um, New York City. She got a hold of a copy of the Burning Spear newspaper and along with two other comrades began a Burning Spear study group. Soon after, she organized an event for the chairman to come to New York and speak, and that was it. She was gripped by the African internationalism and has been, been leading members of the party since then. Secretary General Gaida led the work to build the first tribunal of reparation for African people in the U.S. in 1982 and many subsequent tribunal throughout the world. Gaida has led many campaigns to organize our people for power, the campaign to free the Cross City Five, young African facing a lynch mob in the plantation town in Florida. She was one of the Tampa Four that the state tried to ban from Tampa for organizing our community in the College Hill projects. The campaign to expose the sheriff murder of uh, Jarrell Walker here in St. Pete, shot in the bike while he slept. Gaida led the 2010 Freedom Summer Project in St. Petersburg that mobilized people from throughout the country to attend and culminate in the Black Community Convention. She serves on the board of APDEP and is fully involved in APDEP's work in Africa and so much more. I would like to bring up our Secretary General of the African People's Socialist Party, Gaida Kampong. This is a great time to be alive. Great time to be alive. I just think that just looking at that um, presentation that was done, it just brought back a whole lot of you know, memories in terms of how far we done came and how far we have to go. We still have a ways to go. But I think that we're in a good place. And I think this is so great at this juncture for us to be called on to support our organization. What an opportunity. I just think that for every African to be invested in the struggle for self-reliance, to be invested, you know, meaning that it's our responsibility to make this happen. And we are known as a people, and we're not just calling on Africans, we're calling on everybody to support this movement because, you know, when this, this, in fact, most of the things that we have heard since we've been here, you know, the political report, we've seen the work of the party, we heard the chairman's summation, you know, introduction. We've seen this party on the trajectory that for our, for in our own brain has to be saying that this is the place to be, that this is the organization. So everything that we think is wrong, for everything that we know that we detest, for everything that makes us really nauseous in this whole process of living in, under colonialism or living under capitalism, and we want to see get, get, it gotten rid of, we understand that this party is the way forward. It has to be put to rest. And this party is on the trajectory to do it. So the question about supporting the party, the question about investing in a new day, in a new future, it's got to be the question on everybody's mind today. The question of investing to turn the world right side up so that human beings can begin to live as human being on the beings on the planet Earth. And I think it's just a great call like in, you know, for us to be able to, you know, to really participate in this. We looked at, you know, uh, we saw on the, uh, on the video, on the presentation, Marcus Garvey, and I started thinking that was happening in the 20s, in a period very much like this. And Africans wanted love freedom so much, wanted freedom so much that they dug deep and found money and found, and, you know, and found whatever it took. We had a black star line, uh, a steam line in the 20s. You know, and today, I mean, 
The sky has to be the limit. If we could do that then, and then I went to a place called Sierra Leone, and I saw Africans in worse situation than we are here. I mean, as bad as it is for us here, we were looking at a place where there is absolutely no electrical grid, no running water. You know what it is to live without running water, not being able to flush a toilet or to even just turn on the faucet and just put, get a glass of water? There's none of that. And even with that, Africans were so excited about the politic of APDEP, about the politic of the ASI, about the politic of the African People's Socialist Party, that the minute we got there and began to give them this politic that they saw truly was the way forward, they went out and did just about everything that they could do to make this thing manifest itself. We were looking at clinics. We were looking at offices in every province that we went to, almost every province, there was an office that called itself an APDEP office. And I'm talking about a physical presence. And I'm talking about people that have no job. There's no, no such thing as going out to look for a job. There's no such thing about getting a check to help you out. There's no such thing about getting some donation or housing, uh, you know, Section 8. None of that exists there. They have absolutely nothing. But their imagination was f far beyond that. They, under they saw the vision of free freedom. They saw the vision of freedom, so much so that even while we're back here, the brother called me up from Sierra Leone and said, we need you people back here. You people got to come back here. You know, and he was so excited about it because of the vision that we brought, you know, the vision that says that there's a better tomorrow and that we can do it. And these people showed us what you can do with nothing. And we knew that all along because we came from a people that made, you know, my mother used to say, turn, made blood out of turnips. You know, we came from a people that knew how to do that. So there is no small thing. This is not a, something new. It is just an opportunity now that you've been given to say that we have to support our organization. We are an organization for self-determination and self-reliance. That's what we are. And it begins at home. It means that we have to become truly self-determinant and truly self-reliant. And that is what that call represents today. You know, um, not only did these people have clinics, not only did they open up, you know, make school, and they haven't even read a lot of the stuff that we have, have yet. I mean, we saw our politics in operation. The sisters understood that sisters needed training. Even with no jobs, they needed to get some kinds of skills, something that would be able to do something, at least if something comes along. And so they had a vocational school, APDEP vocational school, and then they understood that they had to solve the problems because the sisters that were coming to the APDEP vocational schools had children. And, you know, just like we understood, you know, back in Oakland where we said, you know, we have to free up these women so that they'd be able to, you know, fend for themselves and support their children. And in order to do that, we had to, uh, you know, assume responsibility for the, for the children. They were doing the same thing. They not only, only opened a vacational school for the mothers, but they opened a child care collective, an APDEP child care collective, and an APDEP vocational school to be able to take care of these children while their mothers were getting you know, um, you know this, this training that they, you know, uh, you know, that they needed. And it was so, I mean, magnificent. Here was a sister telling me that she has achieved her certificate in food handling. She said, I'm, I'm a caterer now. They have no stoves. <laughs> How can one imagine to be a caterer without stoves? And they're cooking on, you know, with wood stoves and, wood, you know, but, she was a caterer and looking to be now trained to be a nurse. So the people had great aspirations, great aspirations. And we saw that, you know, and that was not a small thing for me because what it did, it reinforces what we can do and what we must do. They were doing everything they could with, with nothing, with nothing. And here we are, there's absolutely no reason why we can't have offices everywhere we're located, why we can't have the same things. There's absolutely no reason. And that's what the call today represents that we are going to be challenged. And it's not so much of a challenge, it's a privilege for us to be able to now begin to take care, fund our revolution, take care of our organization, take care of our party. The party has a lot of work in, before it. Even as I speak about what we've seen there, these fronts that are opening up, there's a lot of needs these people really need, things that we need to do. We need to make frequent trips there. We need to be going there all the time now because we have 600 and something members in Sierra Leone. 
We have to, we have, we have to provide a political education. We have to be able to send organizers there. You know, not only out there, but other organizers, because we also have an MP Dome. We have, so there's a lot, a lot of work for us to do. And you know, not only there, because this can be duplicated, and it's just, it's just waiting to happen everywhere that we need to be, because it's, it's catching on like wildfire. We need to be in Colombia. We need to be in all these other places. So I think that this is a, 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 a splendid opportunity for us to be able to make a commitment uh, to take to fund this organization, a real serious commitment. We're going forward. We're in the final offenses as offensive as it is. And that means that we have to, we can't wait to get the resources when opportunity knocks. If the opportunity presents itself, we have to be able to move. That's what it means, season the time. And too often, the resources is the thing that keeps us from moving forward to seize the time. We always have to weigh this and weigh that. And nobody, as quiet as it's kept, and I think it's not so quiet, nobody's going to fund this revolution. Absolutely nobody's going to give you money to fund this revolution. There will be no philanthropic. Uh, uh, checks coming to us. There'll be no, uh, you know, uh, movie stars giving you whatever. Nobody. We are in this and we have to be, and we can do it because this is a party that I've learned. This party can do anything. There is no such thing that we cannot do. There is absolutely no such thing. I learned that very early when I joined this party. You have to make it happen. When I joined this party, I couldn't drive. We had a dilemma. We had to get Queen Mother's Mo Mother Moore to Birmingham for an event. And when the chairman called and said, we got to take Queen Mother Moore to Birmingham, we said, well, I don't know how. What do you mean you don't know how? She's got to be driven, and I don't have a driver's license. So what do you mean? What are you telling me that for? <laughs> I had to get a driver's license, and my first drive was on the highway taking Queen Mother's Moore <laughs> to Birmingham. And I learned very quickly that you have to make it happen. That's what it means to be a revolutionary. You have to make it happen. There's no obstacle that we can't overturn. When people see that confidence, when they see us being able to do that, then they grow, they grow confidence in us that we are able to make this revolution and we are able to make this freedom happen that they're so much desiring of. So we're going to have to take that same, same kind of understanding. Freedom ain't free. And this is a test. Do you want to be free or not? Because it's not a discussion. We say we are African internationalists. It's no longer a discussion. We got to put our money where our mouth is. And we have, it's not a sacrifice either. It is the thing to do. It is an investment. We have to invest in our future and the future of our family and the future of our friends and the future of, you know, of our people. So we have to make this happen. We solve problems all the time. And so this problem we have to solve. So I really want to challenge everybody everybody in here that this organization has to be funded. There should not be another day that we have to do something very vital to advance in this struggle that we have to say we don't have the resources to do it. We have to make it happen. Uhuru. I want to thank Secretary General for that presentation and that call for everybody to help support this movement. But right now what we want to do is we want to give a little bit back to everybody that has given to the party. And the way we're going to do that, you know, we say that it's our time. This is our time, whether we believe it or not. This is our time. So we want to call up everybody that's in this conference and some people that are not in this conference, and we want to give you a little present from the African People's Socialist Party that represents our time, which we're giving away watches. So when you look at these watches, you will be able to know and you will be able to remember the African People's Socialist Party and that it is our time. Right now is our time. So the first name I want to call is Aisha Fleury. <laughs> so we're going to do this very quickly, and we really appreciate Aisha. She just came back from Sierra Leone. Uhuru. Aisha too. Right, Aisha, Aisha too, because of course we have Aisha. Fia, right, Aisha one. We want to call up um, our Northeast representative, Rich Pietra. 
Is he in the room? We want to call up Aaron O'Neill out of D.C. Out of D.C. as well, we want to call Sama Estead. I hope I pronounced that right. A seed. And we also want to call up our uh, Norm, our Director of um, Recruitment and Membership, Chimarangle Rang uh, Waller. Yeah, Rango. <laughs> Chimarangle. We want to call up our Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omali Shatella. And Administrative Assistant Tammy Harris, who's already up at the podium. Our Secretary General, Gaeta Cambon. <laughs> Director of Agitation and Propaganda, Nabinga de Zimbabwe. <laughs> Tamara D. Mbazwe. If you're in the building, please come up. Our princess of the organization, Princess Williams. Johnny Britson, better known as Milk. Victoria Young, if you're in the building, please come forward. Willie Thomas, out of Memphis, Tennessee, if you're in the building, please come forward. X-Man. Xavier, out of San Diego, come on down, comrade. Yeah. Will Lockett, out of Chicago, where you at, Will? <laughs> Benjamin Kaboye, Kaboye, out of DC, come on down, comrade. <laughs> Our president of NPDOM, Diop Olabala. And I'm not sure if these comrades have made it, made it in from Philly yet. Erica Mines, is she here today? James Grant. Oh, come on down, James, our new photographer at NPDOM. James followed um, the campaign for uh, Diop Olabala all around Philadelphia. And he took beautiful, beautiful pictures. We really want to appreciate him. Jeff Harris. Out of Philadelphia, is Jeff? Okay. Uh, Kabina Bantoshango is, is not here. Uh, Kabina and Aisha Fields had um, death in their family, so they was not able to make it to the uh, plenary. But we want to send out a, a, a real salute to these comrades, uh, Kabina and Aisha. Woo! <laughs> Just to continue, we want to also call Fawaz. Fawaz from Philadelphia, is he here? Zenobia from Chicago, are you here? Zenobia? Okay. Okay. Keisha Bolton from Toronto. A child care person. I just want to say Keisha is taking care of all our chair care, child care needs as well as doing the minutes for this, for this plenary. Uhura Keisha. Penny Hess, come on down. Uhura! Is she here? Okay. Why Penny's coming, Janice can't. Is she at the Saturday market on the job? Kitty Riley. Sandy Thompson, come on down. <laughs> okay, Harris Daniel, is he here? Okay. Allison Honey, Haney, I almost said so. <laughs> and is, Re is Ruby here? No, okay. Okay. Wendy Snyder here? Wendy. Wendy. Maureen Wagoner, you here? All right, Uhuru. Maureen, our pilot. Haben <laughs> Yosef, she, she's not here. Camilla, 
Our cook, Camila Hippolyte. Oh! That's the cook. You better treat the cook right. <laughs> Johan Beddingfield. Come on down, Johan. Osachevo, Osachevo, Lu, uh, Luisa Kinshasa. <laughs> that name is gonna stick with you from now. <laughs> Victory, Allah, Comrade Victory. Uhuru. All right, Uhuru. <laughs> Michael Khalif, is he here from Milwaukee? Uh -oh. oh, come on down, Brother Michael. Stephanie Midler, Steph, yeah. oh, oh. our logistical coordinator, is she here? Oh, oh, oh. ah, there you are, Steph. Jesse Neville, is he oh, here? Oh, Jesse, yeah. come on down, Jesse. I know he was here earlier. Oh, oh. Kafira Bar Baronofsky, did I say your name right, Kafira? Kafira, okay. We got these tricky names, you know, That's we got this. <laughs> That's why she let me do the second part. <laughs> she set me up here. Okay, then we have Khalil Pedicisi. Okay. Minnie Jackson here? Miss Minnie. Miss Minnie. Oh, Miss Minnie. Minnie. <laughs> oh, Minnie. Secretary. Minnie. The one and only Miss Minnie. <laughs> Macola, Comrade Macola, UK in the house. Comrade Marcus Cutner in the house. Felicia Williams. No. Torian Watkins. I don't know who that guy is. What for? Torian Watford. <laughs> Peggy Fleming. Not here. Okay. okay. Likai Konongo. Likai. Likai Konongo. Konongo. Okay. Likai. Maria Sparks. Mariah. Mariah Sparks and Vanessa Sparks. Are they here? So where? Okay. okay. Baye Moye. Uhuru. Uhuru. And while she's coming up, Dorothy Eaton. And she's not here. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay, Dorothy, come on up. We still got more bags. Okay. Just add something to the bottom. Okay. Okay. All right, is there anybody whose name we didn't call that sitting here? Because we could have missed somebody. We can't even pronounce it. <laughs> Joe Hamburg and Nate. Nate and Joel. Where are they back? Nate and Joel, right here. Hamburg. And Joel. We did yeah. call Joel. Well, where we was he? He wasn't here. Where is he with the Solidarity people? They're down here. I thought I, I thought her name. I thought so too. Okay, is anybody? Yeah, oh, here it is. Joel. Yeah, we did. Where were you, Joe? Your name was called. Yes. 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 Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we, you've got no excuse now. You have the time. We're gonna synchronize all those watches. Oh, the battery. The battery. And seize the time. This is the time to seize the time. And in those bags, there are batteries. So before you discard them, there are extra batteries. You know, you even got a bonus, an extra battery in your bag, just because we want to make sure that there's absolutely no excuses for you not to seize the time. All right, Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades. We just really, really want to appreciate everyone for coming out to the plenary. And for those of you on Ahura News and Radio, if you are listening and did not hear your name, um, we'll give you plenty of opportunity for, for, you, for us to call your name later in the program. So right now what we're going to do is we've been talking about all the work that the party's been doing 
over the last 40 years. And we put together um, a, a video of some of the work that has been going on in the party for the last 40 years. So we're going to play that right now for you. Recently, in 2011, 
Bogota, president of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, is running as an independent under his legal name, Wally Rockman. On a platform calling for economic development for our communities, as opposed to voting for the That's the reality. 
That's why you need the revolution in the common, the struggle in the common to be united with struggle and run up ruining it all night for this. So your back is safe because it's the same as you. The same trajectory, same objective, same goals. You know the one Africa and one nation. Yeah. Touch one. Touch, all. Touch one. Touch all. That was a powerful video, wasn't it? I really want to give thanks to the comrades that put this video together for us on a very short notice. Uh, Pete out of California. Uhuru Pete, if you're listening, on Uhuru News. And Charo out of the Bahamas. We want to thank these comrades so much for helping us put this together on short notice. So to right now, what we want to do, wait a minute. We've been, you see all the work we've been doing, right? Yeah. Over the past 40 years, this is the work that has made up the African People's Socialist Party, and we still got work to do. We still are in the trenches. We need support. And we, we're calling on everyone on the Uhura News and in this building today to, pour, to support the African People's Socialist Party. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do another uh, brief um, PowerPoint presentation okay. calling on people to help raise resources for the party. <laughs> Don't go nowhere, Chairman. <laughs> you want me to go? <laughs> so, um, today we, we're asking people to support the party. Build the African nation one billion strong. And we have a goal today, our pledge goal today for 2012 is $25,000 in pledges today. We can't do it by ourselves. And I'm not asking, if anybody can do 25,000, please raise your hands right away. <laughs> yeah, we can sit down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking friends, families, comrades, all, anybody that have any association with this party to help us raise these resources today. Every, anyone and everyone can make a pledge today. And we're just gonna tell you what the giving levels are. The first level is to call the Chairman O'Malley Ishatella. That's if you donate 25,000 or more. And the quote from the Chairman is, revolutionaries are optimistic. We can actually envision a new world. 
It is we who will not allow our vision for the future to be determined by what is real today. Uh, the second category is the Patrice Lumumba uh, category. It's $10,000 to $24,999. <laughs> and the quote from Patrice Lumumba, united by a single spirit, a single aspiration, and a single heart, we shall turn Africa into a genuine, free, and independent continent in the immediate future. The next level is Kwame Nkrumah, 5,000 to 9,999. Freedom is not something that one people can bestow on another as a gift. They claim it is a, as their own, and none can keep them from them. And this level is the Harriet Tubman level. It's from 2,000 to $499. $499. On my Underground Railroad, I never ran my train off the track, and I never lost a passenger. Oh, yeah. Ella Baker, $500 to 1999 Remember, we are not fighting for the freedom of Negro alone, but for the freedom of human spirit, a larger freedom that com encompasses all mankind. And then the Fannie Lou Hamer, category, $10 to $499. Action, self-reliance, the vision of self and the future have been the only means by which the oppressed have said and realized the light of their own freedom. Uhuru. So we kind of like broken this down, you know, for people um, to see how they can really realize what they can donate today. If you wanted to donate 2000 a year, that's $5.48 a day for 365 days. For the week, it's $38.50 a week for 52 weeks. And for the month, it's 167 a month for 12 months, which equal $2,000 for the year. Okay. And for $1,000 a year, it's $2.74 a day for 365 days, and that's $1,000 or $19.23 a week for 52 weeks, that's also 1,000, or 83.33 a month for 12 months. And for 500 a, a year, it's $1.36 a day for 365 days, it's $10 a week for 52 weeks, or $42 a month for 12 months, which is a total of 500 for the year. And for $365 a year, a dollar a day for 365 days, $7 a week for 52 weeks, or $30.50 a month for 12 months. So you can email us. We're online right now waiting to take your, your resources, or you can fill out a check here today. And we have people now that's going to be passing around the pledge cards for you to actually fill out your donation card and make your contribution to us today. You can email us at dj at ahuranews.com and online you can go to www.apspahuru.org slash donate. I'm sorry, excuse me. You can email us at dj at Uhuru radio dot com online at www.apspohuru at dot org slash donate and you can make your checks payable to Uhuru OEDF. We're asking everyone to fill out the pledge card uh, completely and drop it in the basket. It is important for us to get all your information today. So what we're going to do now is because we want people to come up and make their pledges so I'm going to kick it off. You can, Aaron, can you get the? I'm going to kick it off, and I'm going to make. I'm going to start with my pledge and say why I'm pledging this amount. Before preparing for this um, this presentation, I had a set amount that I was going to donate, which was a thousand dollars. But after coming here and seeing all the work that we've done over this period you know, I want to 
you know, give my support to the party. You know, I usually eat lunch every day out. So what I'm going to do is try to cut back on eating lunch out every day, and I want to donate those resources to the party. So I want to start by pledging $2,000 for the year. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put $1,000 up front, and then I'm going to pay, what is it, 83 is it $83 a month? Eighty-three thirty-three a month for the rest of the year to meet my two thousand dollars goal. I'm eighty. I'm donating two thousand for the year. I think it's eighty-three thirty-three a month. I think that's what it is. But I'm going to put a thousand dollars down today. So I'm pledging two thousand dollars because I joined the party in nine, no two thousand and ten, all over two years ago, and I don't know where I would be without the party. I really don't. All the opportunities that is offered for me, for me to even be standing right here, up here today, is because of the party. Because I hate doing presentations. I really do. I'd rather you know, clean floors than to be up talking in front of people. And the party has allowed me to be able to, you know, given me confidence. You know, the, the chairman talked about the swagger that go on. I got a little swagger going on today. And I want to thank the party because of that, that I'm able to do all the work that is necessary to help forward the revolution. And I'm, I'm gladly to be able to do that. And I want to thank my leadership again, Chairman O'Malley Ishitella, for having this party and offering me the opportunity to bring this revolution out to the world. So my pledge today is $2,000. Uhuru. What we want to do is to call for somebody to match that. <laughs> Let's not everybody run up at the same time. We have an open mic for people to come up and make your pledge. So um, we have 2,000 on the floor, and hopefully um, we can get a match for that. OK. Well, well I'm going to do my pledge. I have already pledged um, $10 a week. And so I want to up that. I, um, I want to do uh, the $500 pledge, and with hopes that uh, next year I can up that pledge. So I would do the $500 pledge a month. Um, and like you know, Comrade DC said, you know, um, it's. It's the party that makes us who we can be, you know. It is definitely the party that makes us who, who we can be. Um, you know, when we talk about, people say, you know, we make presentations and we do these, and everybody's always talking about how nervous they are, and, and you are nervous, you know, usually when you make a presentation, because we, especially women, you know, we're, we rather do the cooking and all of those other kind of stuff, but it's the party that helps us to understand, to come out of the shell and to, to understand that we have a task to do, and if, we, if not us, then who? We have to do it, you know. We have to mobilize the people, and we have to do what we have to do. And like I said in earlier, that this party is not a can't-do party, but a can-do party. This party, you know, does everything that it's called on to do. And, is, and I'm so grateful for that, you know, in terms of the ability to be who you can be and to walk around uh, knowing that there is a vision, a vision given to us by our leadership, a vision by the, you know, the African internationalist theory of Chairman Amali Yeshitela that really helps us to understand what our responsibility is, what we must do, and if, again, if not us, then who, you know, to end this suffering of our people. So that is a great opportunity. And people always want to know, well, why you look so good, or why you? It's because we have African internationalism. That's the only thing. That's the difference. Because I go back to New York, and I go other places, and I see my friends, and I'm wondering, what the hell happened here? <laughs> you know? And it's because they don't have the vision. When you don't have the vision, you beat up on yourself. You know, you, you, you don't have the vision of the future, so you look to today, and everything you see today, is that's what it means. But when you have the vis vision, you can look beyond today, no matter what today looks like. And that is the key. And that is the thing that African internationalism gave us, and that is the thing that our brilliant chairman, you know, saw and understood, and that's what makes the difference, and that's what we have to give to our people. So I'm asking people to really, really make that commitment. You know, it's not going to be easy, and I know it's a depression and all of that. Yes, that too. 
But, you know, in the depression or whatever, we know that our enemy is weak. And if our enemy is weak, then it's our responsibility to be strong. Yes, right. And we cannot be hampered by resources or anything. We have to seize this time and take this opportunity. So I'm going to call on you again, comrades. Don't be shy. Get up and make your pledge. And you struggle like hell to make it happen. Princess? Go to the mic. If you're going to make yes. a donation, please go to the mic. It's off, Princess? It's off. Okay, um, I'm Princess and I'm going to pledge $500 today and I'm going to do a $45 payment every month. You know, the video was so inspirational for me, so, you know, I'm going to give my $500 a year. All right. All right. All right. All right. Can you state your name, please? I'm Jim Ringo Wall. I'm the National Director of Membership, Recruitment and Membership for the African People's Socialist Party. Uh, also want to really appreciate the presentation that the chairman made. All those things together uh, made me want to make a, a really good pledge. I can't do a whole lot, but I want to do $500 a year. Oh, hooray. Oh, hooray. I just want to uh, say again that if you're online and you're listening and you want to make a pledge, you can email dj at uhuraradio.com. Is that right, Bingo? That's it. All right. So if you're online and you want to make your pledge, just email dj at uhuraradio.com. Uhuru. Yes. And, and so I don't know where I, where I would be. And I appreciate all the comments I've met during the work. I mean, I, I just, I've never met a better group of people in my life. Uh, and uh, I appreciate the party. I appreciate the movement. And I just have to close the five Can somebody say how much we've raised so far? 4700 Thank you. Thank you, Conrad Bahe. <laughs>
$4,700 is what we raised in pledges so far. $4,950. Okay, thank you, Comrade Tammy. Uhuru, Kamreya, thank you. Uhuru. Thank you very much, Wendy Craig out of San Diego. So is there anybody else that would like to come to the mic and make your play? Oh, Uhura Alley. Uhura. Um, my name is Alison Haney. I'm a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee in Philadelphia. Um, I'm here to ask for $4,000 for the Right. Yes, we do. And uh, we've had leadership. We've had the right leadership. We've had the right solution. Yes. You can't fix nothing. Mm -hmm. And we've got the right leader. We've got the right solution. So let's yes. be part of that because that will make us significant where yes. we go. We'll be able to say to yes. people, give the right solution, the right thing. Yes. So I think uh, that's good. So uh, saying that, uh, I'm pledging Yes. So we have time to review all this. Mm -hmm. And we go with all plans. We have to yes. do mostly it. And uh, when this plan is emotional, we have to do it. We need to start from somewhere. So I don't say that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.
to um, to attend tea parties, friends, a hundred dollars. That way, do it on my birthday. All right, Uhuru. Today is your birthday? Did he say it's on his birthday? Okay. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade. Uhuru, my name is James Mayer, and I'm mother of the from uh, Philadelphia and mother of the Ibadan from the branch. I'm going to um, pledge uh, uh, 500. Uhuru. 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 Uh, uh, $100 uh, as soon as I get to this way, I can withdraw some money. I can uh, donate the $100. Right on. Uhuru. 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 I just want to say also that if you're filling out your pledge cards, make sure you put all the information that's required on your pledge card so we will be able to uh, get information to you about your pledges. Um, also, um, we're going to be setting up where you can actually come and make your pledges and we can put it in the system right now as we, as we go later on, on after this um, uh, workshop is done. Uhura. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, my name is Wendy Chatteron. I'm a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, and I just really want to give my appreciation to the party and um, say that I, I give a, a, I'm giving a dollar day this year from, from the donor campaign that was initiated at the APSC plenary, but I'm going to contribute 200 more this year. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you, Wendy. Oh. A hundred dollar pledge from Ruby Gittleson, uh, who will be here Monday with the money. And also Matthew Daniels in Boston, who happens to be my brother, uh, so he would do fifty dollars a month. Oh hooro. Oh, hooro. Can we get a total before Rich comes to the mic of how much we raised so far? So the total is $11,255 so far, comrades. Uhuru. 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 We're getting there. We're almost there. Rich. Uhuru. This weekend, these sneakers came out, the uh, Jordans. <laughs> I've been obsessing over them. <laughs> I was going to buy uh, a pair of $150 sneakers, but after watching that video, I realized how stupid that is. <laughs> I put a better use of my money going to the party. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to pledge today $150. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uh, this is this uh, said I will pledge three hundred sixty-five dollars for the year. Three hundred sixty-five, excuse me, dollars for the year. I am pledging because I believe in the vision of the party, its members, and the people. And that's from K.I. Pedicide. K.I. Pedicide. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, that's the first one already. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, good, good. I need to say that again. Keep coming on. Keep sending them in. So uh, this one says, Uhuru, I'm going to pledge fifty dollars a month via the website. Oh, Harris just announced my pledge in solidarity with the work of ADHD. This is Matt. Oh, Uhuru, Matt. Uhuru. So what is the total so far? Eleven thousand seven hundred and seventy. Uhuru. Uhuru. Is there anyone else that want to come and pledge, make Uhuru, Stephanie? Uhuru, thank you, Stephanie, Uhuru. Uhuru, uh, my name is Pete Riley. I'm a member of the African Team Solidarity Committee, and I'm currently uh, doing 2002 part this year. And I, I would like to give 100, but I wish I could give 100 every day. I've had the honor of having that at the party. And encourage every North American, every white person, every European, if you want to have a future, see a future, Imperialism must go. And the key is the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru. 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 Uhuru.
my statement was weak. It's not about tacos. <laughs> I, I'm giving it to the party because the, it's an investment in my future as well as a white person. There's no future for white people at the expense of the rest of humanity. So I see my future as one that is completely united with the trajectory of the African Revolution that's being led by the party. Oh. Thank you, Jesse. Is there anybody else who would like to make a donation? Is there anybody else that would make a pledge to the African People's Socialist Party today? Online again, you can pledge at DJ at Uhuru Radio dot com. Uhuru. Uh, Uhuru. Can we say how much we've raised so far before? How much? Six hundred a year, fifty a month. How much we have? Thirteen thousand seventy dollars. Thirteen thousand seventy dollars. Somebody back here has thirteen thousand five hundred. I know. <laughs> so we can compare. Notes. Yeah, we can compare. So we're right at thirteen thousand, comrades. You know, given two or three hundred dollars. <laughs> Uhuru, is there anybody else that would like to pledge your donation today to the party? Uhuru. Wow. $10,000 donation from Irene Weigner out of California. Oh, hello. Says she's speechless. Solidarity, <laughs> Solidarity not charity. Uhuru. So be before we take our next pledge, can we get a total so we can see how far we are out from making a twenty-five thousand? So how much is that? No, no, it's not 200. No, no, more than that. How much? We're $1,970 from making. Yeah. 
Okay, right now we're $1,970 from making our goal of $25,000. And um, we have uh, victory bonds at the MAC. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, Conrad. I have a lot of victory bonds. Um, I, some of you know I got a situation, so I got to ship, ship some finances around so I can come up with a $100 donation today as soon as I get to an ATM. But as soon as I fix things up and, fix, and, and ship some things around, I think I'll do um, for $250 for the year. Uhuru. 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 Thank you, comrade. Uhuru. <laughs> so that leaves us how much? $23,320. So we're how much short? <laughs> All right, Mike. How much is it? <laughs> 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 One thousand seven hundred and what? Twenty dollars short of our goal of twenty-five thousand, comrades. We can do this. Twenty-five thousand today. So if you want to make your pledge, please email us at dj at uhuraradio.com. Online, you can reach us at www.asiuhuru.org slash donate. So make your pledges now. We would, we would really like to close this workshop saying that we met our goal of 25000 Uhuru. And, and any amount is not too little. So if it's a dollar a day that you can do, come up to the mic, email us, go online, and make your donations. Uhuru. <laughs> I originally put $10 donation today, $50 a month, $500. But we're going to change that. I'm going at $1,700 at the least. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm stepping out on faith. We'll give you $100 a month. Oh, hurrah! <laughs> So we just had a donation from Miss Minnie, who works in agipro and propaganda, of $1,790 that takes us to our goal of $25,000 for the year. So I want to salute everyone who made their pledges today. We're still taking pledges now. So we can surpass this $25,000. So if you're in the room today and you haven't donated, like I said, no amount is too small. So if you want to do a dollar a day, two dollars a day, 50 cents a day, we don't care. Whatever you can do, make your pledge now. Uhuru. 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 Is that a pledge standing there? Yes. OK, then. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I think we're uh, $25,111. I hope I'm on the we, we'll get it right. At, we'll, we'll announce at the end of the, um, um, today what our final pledge was, but I, I'm sure we're at least over 25000 Okay. And that's just a little amount of money. 25000 is nothing. Yes. 25000 you know, I can go to the cook, hour, right store. That's what I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I, my, my pledge was going to be $100. And your name is? Thank you for everybody, for everybody in this room who made a donation.
donation pledge, and you did not know you wanted to, you just didn't have the resources. But those of you who are online, it's a lot of y'all online. Y'all tune in to see what's going on. We ain't gonna bust a grape. <laughs> but you're gonna send something. Send something. Because you know you ain't gonna be on the front line or anything. But your dollars can make sure this work happens. You heard that presentation of yeah, that's that's right. 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 That's right. that's right. that Southern Methodist Africa. That's right. Sister Mary Ramona, she's a dynamic person. Yeah. Send in your money. If I can come up with $500 and I know some of y'all shoppers are online right now, you know what I'm talking about. Like we said, nothing too small. Anybody else? Every, every nickel helps. Okay. So we wanna go. Okay. All right, so we want to close this workshop out. We think this was tremendous. Um, you know, you see what you can do, and we want to make sure that we're going to do, you know that we're going to do this every time that we come together because we need this. This is the period that we're in, so you come with your pocketbooks ready. We're really proud of everybody who contributed and helped us to make the goal. If you have not turned in your pledge cards, you, sh you should turn it in. You should make sure you fill out all the lines. Everything here is important that's on this application, and you should give them to Tammy or Baye. If you didn't want to get up there and make your pledge, mm -hmm. you can see them and, you know, over at the table and just give them your pledge. Again, we nice. just want the resources you know, to do what we have to do. Okay. And if you want to make a pledge, some people don't want to stand up to the mic. So if you want to make your pledge anonymously, online, or you, know, you just want to hand in your pledge cards, you can do that as well. So we're going to close this workshop by saying, build an African nation one billion strong. A victory until it's won. Uhuru, it's our time. Uhuru. All right. What time? Our time. Whose time? Our time. All right, Uhuru. Uhuru.